presentation. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, all right. Well, just a little bit about me. My name is Joseph Blackman, 28 years old, um, current business owner of Instant Imprints here in Concord, California. I uh, took a store that was ranked 23rd in the, in the world and took it to the, to the top 10. Uh, grew sales in the first year by 67%, and uh, that's just purely from hustling. Uh, purely from being the guy who, who isn't afraid to walk into a dark room, turn the lights on and say, hey, I do this and that. Um, it's, it's, it's about being the type of person that's willing to go out and do more for himself and his family. I don't have a wife or kids yet, but I do this for my last name. I do this for my kids. I do this for my lineage. Um, all the, the, the sleepless hours, all of the rejection, I do that so my kids don't have to go through that. I want to set up a life for them so where they can just have it easy. Um, so that's a little bit about me. So let's get into it. It's called Faith with Works. Um, faith with Works. Uh, we all know what faith without works is, right? Yeah. Exactly, it's dead. So, faith with works. All right, all right. So, let's try to figure out our why. Because if your why is, is strong enough, that's what's going to get you out of bed at, at 5 in the morning to get into the office early. That's going to keep you there from when you close till you know, whenever you have to finish your project or your, or your, or your order or your... You know, finish writing that song, finish writing that book. You have to have a strong enough why. Um, so my why is because I want to I want to provide something for my family that you know they might not have if I didn't hustle for it. My why is that I want to be the guy who can employ people. Uh, when I first graduated college, I came back to church and I seen that there was a lot of employment in in my community, and I wanted to be the guy instead of just going out and getting a job. I wanted to provide jobs for people. Um, I, so I, I, I wasn't really, you know, I had a couple jobs, but I didn't want to go around and apply for jobs anymore. I got a, a four-year degree, finance degree from South Dakota State University, but I knew it wasn't going to take me to where I wanted to be. Um, you know, just being in the rat race, that can kind of just keep you on that hamster wheel that doesn't really get that full, that fullness out of life that I really wanted. Um, so I knew I wanted to be able to create jobs and be able to create an opportunity for people to provide for their own families. Uh, there's nothing that blesses me more than when, uh, when one of my employees can buy gifts for their family at Christmas. You know, when they can take their, they say, hey, can I take a vacation? Or, you know, I want to take my kids to Disneyland or, or Small World Park or Marine World. That makes me smile because of my hard work, they can provide something fun for their own family. And that's my why. So you, you have to figure out what's your why, what your why is. What, what makes you want to do this? Because you know, money, money is, is cool, don't get me wrong, money is cool, but it's not everything. Um, it, you know, there's, there's millionaires that are, that are, um, that, that are broke. You know, there, are, there are people who only make $10,000 a year who are rich. You know, so it, it doesn't, I mean, money is relative. You know, money, it, it gives you purchasing power, it gives you the, 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 the resources to free up time, um, it gives you the, the resources to, to do what you want with your own time, effort, and energy. Um, but money isn't everything. So when people say, you know, what are your goals, you know, and they say to make a, a X amount of dollars, you can tell that that, that might, it's, it's probably not a strong enough why. So, so don't, I wouldn't chase money, I would chase a, a, a greater why. You know, a greater sense of, you know, what you want to do for your community or your family that makes, you know, you, you stand out or makes you want to be different than what you're supposed to be or what society wants you to be. Uh, so figure that why out. Figure out why you want to accomplish that goal. All right, so this, is, this was huge for me, getting out of the passenger seat and getting into the driver's seat. So the passenger seat, I'll just kind of go over that. Um, you know, say you're, you're going to Oakland, right? And you start off in Pittsburgh and and you might know of a, a quicker way to get to Oakland, you know, instead of going Highway 4 to, to uh, the 242 to 24, you might want to cut over, uh, what is it, a railroad to Kirker Pass and then get on Maceo Valley and then get on uh, 6 or 224. You, 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 you might know a quicker way, but you're in the passenger seat, so you can't take that quicker way. You're, you're, um, you're stuck with whatever the driver wants to do. Um, I like being in the driver's seat because I have control. Um, people think being a control freak is a bad thing. I mean, we all like control, right? We will want to control our finances. You know, we want to be able to control like how our kids are. We want to control, you know, how the how the bank uh, 
interacts with us. We want to control how you know society sees us. We we all want this sense of control, but but we shouldn't we shouldn't relinquish it when you know money is involved. Um, you've probably heard of the the um, the adage that money is a bad thing. Like you know people are. are stinky rich or filthy rich like we 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 say that money is something negative uh we, we tell our kids that you know uh, a guy might have a lamborghini but he's probably divorced and he's a jerk you know and nobody likes him uh, and 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 that's that that was kind of put in us when we were growing up or or you know in in, in my community that you know, the rich people are bad people and i mean i, I work for at&t I worked in uh, in Marin County, and you know one of the top zip codes in the world. I mean, for for revenue, but uh, I learned that rich people are cool. <laughs> you know, rich people they're they're givers. You know, people who are wealthy they know how to give. Uh, they know how to how to how to you know how to to code switch and how to be around certain people and how to how to be in certain situations. And then I would go to houses in you know in North Richmond or, or West Oakland, and I could tell that it was it was. It, it, sorry if you're from that area, but uh, it was a different sense of you know how they treated me. You know I would get I would get big tips over in uh, Marin County, but when I came to Richmond or Oakland, I, I you know they're they're trying to get free stuff out of me, and it's like come on guys like. Uh, and one thing I learned coming up is that you know uh, when you. You, you should want to take rich people out to lunch. And it's just, it's, it's kind of like a, a mindset, meaning that just because they have a lot more money than you doesn't mean that they should pay for your lunch. You should be taking them out and trying to pick their brain and try to, um, to take their knowledge and then apply it to your own situations. Um, so I, I and, and once I got that, I was thinking like, man, that, that makes so much sense. Because there's a lot of people who don't have a lot of money, and they say, "Well, this guy's a millionaire; he should be paying for lunch." But no, I see it as the opposite. I mean, we have to, if, if you, you know, to get something you never have, you have to do something you never done. Um, so, so take that leap, take that, take that extra, you know, take that extra leap of faith, and and, and and go up to somebody who's a lot more wealthy than you and ask them out for lunch, and then pay for it. Offer to pay for it. And you'll be surprised that a lot of a lot of people who are successful they want to give back. Like the last the last thing on the goal sheet was after I achieve my goal, how will I give back? Because that's the true sign of success. Uh, when you can take what you've created and what you've done and then share it with somebody who's trying to be in your shoes or you know in in, in the type of shoes you're in, you know, years from now. Um, and then cut people out. This is huge for me. I mean, we all have these friends, right? Friends or family. I mean, family is something you can't choose, and sometimes family can get in the way. Uh, family, they might, they might try to tell you, oh, well, you know, our families, you know, nobody really ever made that much money in our family, so don't really expect that. Or, um, you know, no, none of our family goes to college, or, you know, none of our family's ever been a doctor, lawyer, or anything like that. So don't, why are you aiming for it? And that's that's what. I mean, those are bottom feeders. Those are people who gave up on their goals, so they're trying to stifle yours. They're trying to stop you from attaining that life. Because just, you know how it is, once you start getting some success, and they're like, oh, who, who do they think they are? And then you kind of get this, uh, they kind of resent you a little bit. They kind of see you as, oh, you know, you think you're high and mighty, you're a hot shot now. And, and you're not even really successful, but you're trying to be. And people see that when you're trying to be, they just want to stop you. I mean, the crab's in a bucket. Uh, concept and that is funny because they got YouTube videos of that crabs are actually really trying to crawl out of the bucket and the other crabs are like no you're staying in the hood with us like you're staying in poverty with us that is it, it, it's, it's it's a sickening mentality um, and then you're, you're the sum total or you're the average of the five closest friends you, you, you five, five closest friends that you have so think about your four or five closest friends think about how much money they make Think about what kind of cars they drive, uh, what kind of schools their kids go to, um, you know, what kind of vacations they take, and it, it, it's probably the same same as what you do. Um, and and it's it's as simple as as you going into making new friends. Um, and I, I learned I learned this at a, at a at a younger age. Once you start saying no to like going out to the clubs and. Um, and doing wild and crazy stuff, your friends start to fade a little bit. And it's so, and you, you, you say, say no, you know, say no, so you can say yes to yourself. Say no to all that other stuff, so you can say yes to your own goals and dreams. 
uh, say say no to, you know, hey, let's let's go out to Oakland because I know some people out there they want to hang out. And, and, and say yes to working on yourself, reading a little bit more of that book, you know, watching some YouTube tutorial on how to how to mix and master some uh, recording uh, software. Learn, say yes to to working on a script for a play. Say 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 yes to to finishing off that book that we all say we have inside of us. We all have books inside of us. We just gotta write it. I mean, now in, in a side note, there's I mean, there's software on Google Drive that allows you to talk into the computer and it types up what you say. So really, I mean, I'm halfway through a book now just because I sat down and just talked into the computer. Like, you don't even have to write anymore. That's how easy they're making it for us. We just have to take advantage of it. Uh, so say, say yes to yourself. Say no to the, to the other stuff that they want you to get into. All right, so risk to reward. So quick question, who has more job security, the entrepreneur or the employee? Just say Entrepreneur. Oh, okay, okay that's, that's good. We got, we got that answer out of the way. Okay, so a lot of people think that a guy who works at Shell, right, he makes ninety thousand dollars a year, versus a guy who work who who has his own cab company. He only he only has one cab, and he's a sole proprietor. He's a sole owner or sole sole operator. People think that the guy who works at Shell has more job security, and I I, I, I differ on that because the guy who drives his own cab, he has multiple sources of income, meaning that every person that gives him money. That's, that's how many times he, he creates an income for himself. The person who works at Shell, you know how it is when you got a boss and it say you have a, a bad day and then your boss is having a bad day and you guys meet up, like that can end badly for you because hey, he's the boss and you're the employee. He can say, you know what, I don't like your attitude today. You know, my attitude's <laughs> off. So I, you know, you're fired or I'm gonna cut your hours back to part time. And then that six bedroom house you got, you can't afford that anymore. That boat you got, you can't afford that anymore. Your kids are in college, you can't afford that anymore. And your whole life is, you know, is, is in Shell's hands. And when they cut back in your paycheck or your hours or, or your, you know, your compensation plan or your retirement, that's gone. I mean, that I, 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 lear, I, I learned that at, at at and is that, you know, if, if, if I, if, you know, we, I, I used to drive the trucks around. And if I hit an old lady <laughs> and kill her, like I'm fired. You know, and that and that can happen. You know, <laughs> so and, and 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 at the time I was working at AT and T, I used to shoot music videos on the side, and 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 I would I would have more enjoyment and feel a lot better about making four hundred dollars on a video versus a three thousand dollar paycheck. You know, it's just because I created this for myself. This four hundred dollars, I did this for myself. You know, nobody gave this to me. I went out and found that client. I went out and shot that video, edited the video, you know, was likable enough to want them to hire me, uh, you know, was, was tactful enough to get it to them on time, and they paid me out for it, right? That made me feel so much better than clocking in. Oh, I'm here at nine, boss. I'm here, I'm here, y'all, I'm here, be cool. <laughs> and then getting in my truck and going out and, uh, and doing the work. And just, just being able to create for myself made me feel so much like a man. It, it made me, because when somebody hands you a paycheck, they own you. I mean, let's be honest. They own you. Uh, they own you. I mean, I, I use paychecks as leverage nowadays because I have employees. I got five employees. So I use I use money as leverage because I'm giving them money so they can go out and do work to, 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 to grow my dream. I mean, I'm helping them get closer to their dreams. I'm not like manipulate, manipulative or, or using them. I'm, I'm actually compensating them for a good or a service so they can help me grow my business so I can accomplish my goals and dreams. It's not, I mean... People think that you know all bosses are bad or like all oh, they're, they're trying to get over. It's, no, we're we're really trying to trying to put other people in position to prosper, uh, so they can take their paycheck, tithe off of that, get a return on that, take some more off their paycheck, invest that into a into a financial plan, get a return off of that, and then spend the rest of their money however they want to spend it. Like that's that's what I'm here for is to give people uh, and enable them to 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 accomplish their own goals and dreams. I mean, a lot of people see it as a bad thing when you're the boss. Everybody wants to take shots at the boss, but you know, I <laughs> I learned that when you the more pushback you get, you're probably going in the right direction. You know, the, the more people say, oh, you know, I don't like this or that. Like, and I learned this in, in marketing. The more attention you get, the the better you're doing. I mean, everybody knows Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, right? I mean, who knows what Kim Kardashian is good at, right? <laughs> well, what is, I mean, what is she good at? But one thing I know is that everybody knows her. She's got so much attention. 
Ray J video. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so when when you have that much attention, I mean, she could sell she could sell uh, you know a fragrance. She could sell clothes just because of her name, just because of the attention she gets. Um, so don't be afraid to walk into that dark room, turn the lights on, and yell at everybody. Hey, I do this and that. Who wants to give me money for it? You know, don't be afraid to be that guy or girl. Um, and then beware of the golden handcuffs. Uh, that, that's kind of going back into the into the light of the shell employee and, and me being at AT and T. You know, they give you this paycheck and you're comfortable. Comfortable is what's killing America. I don't want to get political, but the, the the middle class is full of comfort, full of people that make enough money to where they can have that five bedroom house, get that boat, go on that vacation every year, but now want to do more for themselves. I mean, I know I know so many people that that have you know a, a, a you know a combined six figure income. And, and they're doing well, but you know, on the inside, they know that they can do more. Uh, they, they, that, that's, I, I go to seminars like these, I go to conferences, I read books, I have mentors, uh, I'm always trying to develop myself. But the person that's comfortable isn't in this room right now. You know, all you guys, you, you guys are saying that, hey, I wanna do more, I wanna be more, I wanna, I wanna know more, um, and that's why you're here, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, it, I mean, just look around you, the people that are here will be the people that you know, we'll have employees that will have a successful business with an abundance of clientele. I mean, we could pray till we're blue in the face, but if we don't get out there and actually do it, you know, put some work behind the faith, we're not going to get there. Uh, I mean, it, it's, so, I mean, just, yeah, look around. Like, these, these are the people who are going to be leading the business, who are going to have the successful ministries, who are going to have the, you know, the, the, the ops, you know, even if you don't want to quit your day job, you're going to have a six to 10, you know, we have your nine to fives and you have a six to 10. A lot of people go home and watch TV. You know, they watch basketball wives, or they watch, you know, like I, I didn't even watch, I only watched half of the Super Bowl. I didn't even know it was really the, the all-star game because I'm so focused on accomplishing my own goals and dreams. I could care less about the Warriors. You know, I, it's, it's good that they're doing great, but I could care, because they're not paying me. They're not, they're not putting my kids through college. You know, if, if you know people are hooting and hollering like, "Oh yeah, Steph Curry is a great," like, he's probably good. He's probably a cool guy. He's probably real cool to hang out with. But I could care less about what he's doing because I'm trying to get my own thing going on. I mean, we got to be. We have. We have to have a, sem a sense of selfishness. Like, hey, there's so much going on in the world, but I need to focus on me. I need to focus on what I need to get done. Uh, I got this to-do list every day. Get it done. You know, the TV's not going to get it done for you. That's that's a whole other topic. TVs. <laughs> All right, so now we kind of got the, 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 the groundwork laid out. And so let's get into business. Let's, let's get into it. Let's put, some, let's put some work behind our face. Let's put some rubber to the road. All right, so, so here's, here, I'll just talk you through, through, through how I got into my business. So I knew I wanted to work for myself. Um, and then you'll, you'll learn that if, once you work for yourself, you know, you're not necessarily working for yourself. You're working for that, that next customer. You know, the next person that walks into my door on Monday, you know, I work for them. You know, the person after that, I work for them. Somebody else calls in, I work for them. So you're not necessarily working for yourself, but you're still creating for yourself. Um, and so, so when, when I knew I wanted to get into business, I had to find a niche that was viable. And a viable niche, that means that it's something that you can get into and you can take some of the market share. Let's just say... Um, Okay, for, for example, like uh, supply and demand, you know, if, if somebody just say, say if there was a, a, a Amber Alert, right? And it came on your cell phone and said that there is no more water available in the world anymore, right? All of you will probably start gathering as much water as you could on the table because you know that, that, that the supply is diminished and the demand is, is, is increased. Right, so you need to figure out like what you can get into where the supply is not that that that, that much to where the demand overshadows it, where people want it but people don't know where to go and get it from. It's like cutting grass. Uh, a, a ten-year-old kid knows that all these 40, 50 year old guys don't want to wake up early on a Saturday morning and cut their own grass. So he says, "Hey, sir, I'll cut your grass for X amount of dollars." And they go, "Man, you know." He's supplying my demand. You know, he, he, you know, he's gonna cut my grass for me. I'm gonna pay him, leverage my money, and, and use his time, effort, and energy to get something done that I don't really want to do. So you have to think of uh, the people are either too, uh, too lazy, uh, too scared, or don't have enough money to do something. So you can do that for them and charge them for it. Uh, uh, meaning lazy, as in 
a lot of people don't want to go out and learn how to screen print a t-shirt. So that's why I make t-shirts and then I can charge them for it. A lot of people don't want to, um, you know, a lot of people don't want to entertain themselves or feed themselves. So they go out and buy food. You know, they go to a restaurant or they go to like a movie. Uh, uh, if, 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 if there's a way for you to, to, to charge somebody for something that they don't want to do, that's your business. But then you have to figure out what's your skill set, what are your strengths. I mean, um, I, when I graduated college, and you'd be surprised, college isn't, college doesn't really prepare you for life. Amen. College is just a glorified daycare for guys with hair in their face, but still no direction in life. You know, <laughs> I mean, I played football, it was free. I mean, that, that, that was a blessing in itself. I, I graduated college uh, without owing anybody a penny because I, I, you know, I worked my butt off on the track and in football just to get to that level. So they said, hey, we'll use your time, effort, and energy and leverage your skills to grow our football program. They're making millions of dollars off of me, which is cool. Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't worry about how much other people make off of me. It's okay. Like, I, I know where I need, to, where I'm trying to get to, so I don't worry about it. But, um, so, so don't, don't think you always have to go to school for something. A lot of people say, oh, I want to go back to school, or I want to get my master's, or I want to take a couple classes on that first. I would say just start doing that what you want to do. Uh, take, people, I mean, you've probably heard of people say, oh, I'm a perfectionist, I'm a perfectionist. I'm a fan of the mantra that it's good enough to ship, meaning that you need to get something good enough and get it out the door. Put it in somebody's face. I mean, if when you launch a product, you should be a little bit embarrassed about it. Meaning that you you got it buttoned up to a point that where somebody sees the value in it and they're gonna pay you for it. Because what do perfectionists do? They sit there and they tweak and they tweak and they and they try to fix it and they say, oh, and it's not, and it's, the market's not right or people aren't buying or it's the fourth quarter. And everybody's focused on the holidays. You know, you need to get that thing out the door. Just start it. Do it. Take that product and put it in people's faces. Take your service and say, hey, I do this and that. Uh, get it out the door because you'll never know how good your your product or service is until you get feedback on it and feedback feedback meaning by dollars you know when 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 uh when when, when my store isn't doing the right the right revenue it needs to be doing i look at myself why am i not making the, the this money this month why why is this month better than this month why is this quarter better than this quarter it's because you know i need to figure out you know what what the what the the market is telling me are they saying like nobody's buying uh, short sleeve t-shirts in, in, in December? Well, yeah, it's probably because it's cold. So I need to pitch more long sleeve shirts and hoodies, right? right. So you gotta figure out what, <coughs> what, uh, what people need at what time. Get the feedback, put it in front of people's faces, you know, uh, um, and see what they say about it. You'd be surprised that when somebody doesn't buy your product, it's not, it's, they're not saying no to you. You know, a lot of people, uh, they have this fear of rejection, and I, I got over that. I, I mean, I'm still, we all still battle with it, but that fear of rejection, I mean, it's, that's why people still sit on the couch until they're 60, because they don't want to go out there and try to say, hey, I, uh, I'm a massage therapist, because they don't want to get told no, you know, or, or hey, I'm a, um, I'm a singer-songwriter, and people say, well, I don't, I don't like your music, so I'm not going to buy it. You, you just, just. Tell people about it. Put CDs in people's hands and get the feedback. Maybe you know they, they call it the um, the American Idol syndrome. Uh, your family and friends, you know, when you watch American Idol, they come out and they're all crying and stuff, right? That's because their family and friends told them that they were great at something when they really weren't. They, they weren't. Like, they, 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 you know, it's, oh, you're such a good singer at the church. But once you get put in front of national TV and they say, really sing it, you know, acapella, and they're not good at it, and then the judges say, you, you know, you're not fit, uh, they, get, they get hurt. But that's because they didn't take it out into the marketplace and really test it. Your family and friends aren't going to give you good feedback. They're gonna give you the loving, dovey feedback that says, "Oh, you're great. You can do anything. You can be everything. You know, just you're you're great. You're gonna be great." And, that, and sometimes it's not true. You need to take it out to people you don't know and to somewhere you've never really been before and say, "Hey, am I good at this? Is this product gonna fill your need?" And then you'll get the feedback from it. And the feedback, you should be. I mean, you should be uh, a vacuum for it. All right, so marketing, uh, and that goes back into to figuring out how you're gonna present your product. Um, so with, with marketing, it's, it's, 
it's it's a lot of people see it as a monologue, like Coca Cola, right? Coca Cola, they just they keep pumping out commercials and ads and all this, but they know that you know it's it's not necessarily somebody seeing like the polar bear commercial for the Super Bowl that's going to get them off the couch and go and buy Coca Cola. That's just a monologue. They're just trying to keep that red and white in front of your face. Like the, the branding, like the people know the Starbucks because it's like the green and white. You don't even know it really, like I, I went past, uh, past Panera Bread and I really looked at the, the symbol and it's like some lady holding bread, but I never really noticed it until I looked at it. But I can, I can uh, decipher a Panera Bread uh, uh, logo versus a lot of other things. So it's, you know, how are you gonna position it? How are you gonna put it in front of people to where it's packaged up and, and it looks right and somebody wants to give you money for it? Um, it, when you, when you, and, and I've, I've been doing this recently with Instagram, uh, it's called Instagram Influencer Market. So people with a whole bunch of followers, I give them X amount of dollars and they put their ads on, or put my ads on their page. And then, and then uh, people hit, the, hit or like, and I, I follow them. And then I, I, uh, I, I, I talk to them and see if they want my product. Um, and, and then I, and then if, if something doesn't work, if like my copy, if I say a certain line, so many, or, or, or a certain phrase, and I don't get a response on that, I tweak it. Uh, tacking, that's a word, that's a word a lot of sailors use. A lot of, a lot of guys who, uh, who, who uh, or in, in the, in the, I guess the nautical industry. Uh, tacking means that, you know, you, you go, you go, you know, a couple clicks and then you check and see where am I at, where am I, am I in the right direction? And then, you know, sometimes when you're in the ocean and you got the wind going on, you don't really know like exactly where you're going. So you got to go somewhere and then check it out and figure out, okay, I need to get back here. Then I get, get back here. So you're always testing and figuring out where you're at. Okay. So my numbers say this, so, uh, this doesn't make sense. So I'm going to try this. Okay. This works a little better. So I'm going to try this. Okay. This doesn't work. And then you try it again and then you keep figuring out what works for you. Like what? You know how like what what gives you the best return on your marketing dollar um, when you're marketing I mean it's easy to just throw a thousand dollars away and not see a return on it um, it's easy, I mean for bigger companies you can throw a million dollars away and not see a return on it so you got to figure out like what's that thousand dollars like is is you know a 40% return on the thousand good or can I go for 60 we all want a hundred or more than a hundred percent return on our dollar but you got to figure out like what's gonna give me the biggest bang for my buck uh, so all this tech market and then beat obscurity, you, uh, small businesses and, and I'm, I'm an owner of a small business and I, I necessarily, I mean, it's, it's, it's a start for me. And it's a good start because it is, it's growing me up. It's teaching me a lot, but uh, we, a lot of us suffer from obscurity. Obscurity is when people don't know who you are or what you do. Um, so if nobody knows who you are or what you do, they won't buy from you. How can they buy from you if they don't know what, uh, what you are or who you are or what you do? So don't be afraid to go out and tell people what you do. I remember when I, when I first started shooting the music videos, most of my clientele would come from the, the, the current shoot that I was shooting. It would be me, a rapper, and like 10 other guys, right? And so in, in the culture nowadays, everybody's a rapper. So, so the other 10 guys would be like, hey, this guy shoots video, he seems cool. Uh, and I have business cards, so I just give it to them. And then I would get uh, clientele from them. And so, but the only way they would know that I was a videographer was because I was telling them I was a videographer. If I, if I was just out there and wasn't really, you know, saying like, hey, I'm a videographer, then nobody would work with me. Uh, so once you get past obscurity, that's when you start to figure out, okay, like, you know, they, a lot of people know what I do. How can I tell more people? How can I get this in more, in front of more people's uh, faces? And then the power of pre-sales. Uh, in my in my uh, business, where it's inventory intensive, meaning that I can I can have a hundred T-shirts in my shop and they can sit there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but now we have a system to where you know it's kind of an on-demand ordering. If I order a shirt, I get it the next day. But um, if you're if you're selling CDs or if you're selling books or if you're selling like a, a webinar or if you're if you have a, a product, um, beware of having stale inventory, meaning that. Take your product, just make five of them. Don't make a hundred. A lot of people, they start up with these MLM companies um, or, or in the network marketing, they go and buy a thousand of these juice boxes, right? Or the you know protein shakes or something. Don't take, take, only buy five of them and see if those five sell. Because if you can't sell those five, then what are you doing with the, with the garage full of them? You know, and, and I mean, some people are like, they go out and buy a whole bunch of inventory, they're all gung-ho, yeah, I'm gonna do this and that. I got all this product, yeah, we're gonna make a ton of money. And then they, they don't know that the market isn't gonna respond well to it. Uh, so, so just 
pre-sell it. Even, I mean, uh, some people, what they do is they start a website or a service and they push it in front of people's faces. And then once they collect money from it, that's when they build out the product or service. I mean, you guys heard of Kickstarter or um, uh, the, all these crowd, these crowdfunding services. These are, these are services that say, okay, I'm gonna build this product, but I'm gonna need you guys to buy into the concept first. I have a strong enough concept that says, you guys are gonna give me money, and then I'm gonna fulfill the product later. So don't be afraid to pre-sell. If you don't have any inventory, it's okay. People will say, just say, hey, I'm gonna ship it in two or three weeks. You know, I'm writing this book, uh, you know, pay me for it, you'll get it in a week, and then finish it off, even if it's only 90% done. Don't be afraid to pre-sell because if you get stuck with a whole bunch of inventory, what the, it does something to your brand. When you see a whole bunch of your 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 baby, your still inventory, it kind of can can hurt your, your your brain and your heart. It kind of makes you feel like, man, like this, you know, business is rough. You know, like I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, seriously, when you have still inventory, it, it does something to you, and then there's the cost associated with it. Um, and then yeah, be a vacuum for feedback. Get it in front of people's faces and see what they say about it. All right, scalability. So, and that's that goes to part of with, with me being in a small business. I mean, I, I have a geolocated business. I have a storefront. I got 1,200 square feet in Concord and then 1,500 in Pittsburgh. That's, my my core customers come from Concord, Wanna Creek, uh, um, Clayton, you know, the Sur Pleasant Hill, the surrounding cities. I get some from Oakland. I, I don't really do that much in Pittsburgh, Antioch. Um, so my, my business is, is geolocated. Um, and that's what, that. And that, that's what I'm trying to get out of. That, that's why I, I started the online business to where I can sell, and I've, I've been shipping orders to Louisiana and Kentucky and stuff like that. And it, it's, it's better because I can scale it. Scalability means that, you know, if, if I was a, um, if, if, I'm a, if I'm a sole proprietor, if, if I'm a, a plumber or, um, you know, or a handyman, the only, the only money I can take in is for how many sinks I, I plumb. You get what I'm saying? So if you plumb 10 sinks, or if you fix up, uh, you put in 10 water heaters, that's the only amount of money you're gonna uh, take in. And then you have to do the work, you have to talk to the customer, you have to collect the money. But scalability means that you hire 10 people, pay them, and then they do 10 uh, water heaters each, and then you can collect the money from that. Now, you're, now, now we're talking. You know, now we're getting out of the rat race because a lot of people, uh, a sole proprietor, sole operator, um, it is someone who goes out and, and does the work, you know, they, they market, they do the work, they collect the payment, but then they, it's, that's, that's it. I mean, it's kind of a glorified job when you just work for yourself and you're the only, you know, only person swinging the bat. So that's why I knew the power of employees, like, hey, I need to have other people so we can do more. I mean, we, we, to do more, it's, the, the, the world, the market only reacts um, to, to businesses that, that supply and need at, at a good price. I mean, once, once I got to the rate of, uh, you know, when I was shooting the videos, the part I didn't like about it was that I was the only person out there doing it. I was the only person in editing it. So it was just me by myself. I couldn't scale it. I couldn't shoot two videos at the same time. So I knew I needed uh, to figure out some way to hire somebody or, or get into a different business. Uh, and that's, I mean, it's, a, a, it's, it's good to, to work for yourself, but then when you're working for yourself, by yourself, it's, it's all you. And then if, if you want to take a sick day, you don't make any money because you're at home, but you're the only person that operates it. Um, so don't be afraid to hire. I mean, I, I, you know, sometimes when money's tight and you still have to hire, just do it anyways, because it all, it, 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 it's, it's weird how it works. I'm sure it, it's, it's guy that has his hand on it, but it's, it, the money always comes once you, once you take that, that leap of faith and hire somebody else. When you say, hey, you know, we're doing so much right now, I can stay till 11 p.m. tonight and get this job done, or I can bring in somebody else for the next two weeks and then have, you know, have them work on it, you know, and pay them to do it. You're gonna take a hidden payment, but you get to free up your time and then you get to free up your energy to be able to uh, interact right with the next customer. Because I, in my first year, my first, you know, couple months in business, I had cut back to one employee and I, I just wanted to get a, a better heartbeat of the business. I wanted to figure out what was really doing, what was really involved with it. So I cut back and I said, hey, I don't need you, I don't need you. It's just gonna be me and you, we're gonna work this and figure it out. And I'll be in there until one, two, three, I'll be in there all night, you know, from, from sun up, like all the way through the night and then work the next day. But then I could tell that when another customer came in, I had bloodshot eyes, you know, I'm groggy, you know, I'm angry because I was in there all night 
And now this new customer is like, well, what's wrong with this dude? He seems like a likable guy, but there's something wrong with him. And they don't want to buy. So I, I knew that I needed to hire people so they can work on it, so I can still be fresh and energetic and ready to take another order, ready to go out and knock on some more doors and take in more sales. And that's just that, that's scalability. When you can when you can take your 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 product and just do it a thousand times instead of you having to do it a thousand times. I mean, we only have 24 hours in a day. Just think, we had two people. That's 48 hours. Okay, so make money, make money. And this is this is where this is where you you grow your business and you want to you want to you want to start you want to start pulling back, meaning pulling your equity out and then and letting it letting it start roll for itself. So I'm a firm believer of chickens over a nest egg. You probably heard of a nest egg, right? You know, you work X amount of years at the company, they give you a fat retirement, they give you a pension. Uh, I, I can't really subscribe to that model because I, you know, I'm my own retirement. You know, I bought a rental property in 2013, and and like real estate is my retirement. You know, that house I bought it at 105 is worth 145, 150 now. So that's you know that's 30, 40 thousand dollars of equity in it. You know, and that's that's a part of my retirement plan. I don't have a company saying like, you work for me for so long, I'm gonna kick you off so much cash every month, or I'm gonna give you this huge, you know, chunk of change when you retire. You know, I don't I don't subscribe to that. I want to be able to have a chicken every month that lays an egg with cash in it. You get what I'm saying? I want to have a, 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 a you know a, a, a ten unit apartment that every every rent roll I collect that. You know, every 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 month you know, rents are coming in. Or uh, I wanna have a business that, you know, every month after expenses, I get set aside a, a certain portion of money that I can play with. You know, it may not happen to operate that business. So, I mean, you know, from one business to two business to three business to, to two 10 plexes to a 100, 100 unit apartment complex, that's where, that's where the re retirement money is from. That's, that's where, you know, success, I mean, once you can start making money, they call it mailbox money. Once you just wake up on a Saturday morning and you go to your mailbox and you got check after check after check, you know, and, and, and that's your money. You know, that's that's a way for you to say, okay, I did this back when I was, you know, uh, you know, X amount of years ago, and now the money's starting to, to come in. It's, it's, it's kicking off eggs for itself. You know, so I'm a firm believer over chick, uh, chickens over a nest egg. And then driving finances, uh, they, 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 when you work for somebody, I, mean, I see it this way: um, the world is not the world is not um, crazy enough to give somebody something that they're undeserving of. Meaning that you you have to you have to you have to earn it. I mean, you have to go for it. You have to actually get out there and do it. Um, when when you when you create a business, that's what's going to drive your dollars in. Um, but it, it, the, the work that comes behind it, that's what really is gonna get you out of that business. When you, when you wanna get out of something, it has to be going so good by itself that somebody's gonna take it off of your hands for a certain amount of money. Um, it has to be performing at a certain rate to where somebody says, you know what, I like the way you set that business up. You know, how much do you want for it? Because if I buy it from you, I don't have to really run it, it's already running by itself, and then I can make some money off of that. Um, so, so driving the finances and then real estate for me, that's where I want to park my finances at. Um, uh, you know, business is, is going to drive it for you, but, but have an investment, have a, I mean, you can, you can buy up raw land, uh, and just, and just, you know, over the years, sell it to, to real estate, uh, developers. You can, you can buy, um, you know, a lot of people give multi-level marketing a bad name, but the, there's two things I love about uh, multi-level marketing. I, I'm not in one, I don't really subscribe to them, but there's two things I love about it. Is it this personal development and then the power of networking. Like everybody in this room right now, you all want more, you all wanna do more, you all wanna be more. Um, and that's, when, once you get around that attitude and that energy, that makes you wanna do more. You know, the average of your five closest friends. Like all of us here are, you know, potentially friends. So everybody who here wants to do more, it's gonna make you wanna do more. Um, and then the personal development, like reading books, get around people that are smarter than you, get around people who are doing better than you. Like I, um, there's a couple print shop owners that you know, they're doing, you know, they're doing six figures a month or seven figures a, a year. And I say, how did you get from my position to your position? You know, how did you get from, from there to here? You know, taking in, taking them out to lunch, saying, "Hey, how did you grow it up so quick? How did you scale it? You know, how did you, you know, hire? How did you go from five employees to fifty? 
you know, what's that like? You know, what's middle management like? How do you deal with that? Getting around those people that are going to teach you that. Um, and so, so don't be afraid to, to park some money in network marketing. I mean, buy up some inventory, get some people in your bottom line, you know, work it, work it. I mean, this, it, it works. I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that it, if you work at something, it's going to work for you. And then, I mean, we're all here because we want to get started. So um, I'm, if I want to start a new profit center in my business or start something new, I just start at that moment. I mean, and it's more of a decision than actual action. When I, when I, when I wanted to write a book, I, okay, boom, I, I went on Photoshop and did a, did a cover. Like, cover's done, you know? I, I started writing it. So that, that got me to say, okay, I started something, now I gotta finish it. You know, I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm a great starter, but I wanna be an even better finisher. I wanna be somebody who says, you know, that guy, you know, whatever he starts, he finishes. Even if he fails at it, he still finished it. Because a lot of people think that failure is like the end for stuff. Failure, it, failure, it's 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 only failure if you quit. But if you learn from it, that's actually a win in disguise. I mean, you you can hit a wall and you'll know, like, okay, I don't want to go in that direction anymore. You know, you might you might want to market another product and nobody responded to it, so you might want to just cut that loose and say, you know, I'm gonna try something else. So don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of. Of, uh, of trying something, you know, starting something and not finishing it. Because you can always tweak, you can always, I mean, there, there's always gonna be tomorrow. I mean, I, I like to believe that. So, so always get, 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 to the, to the, get to the next step, you know, start it. What, what does it take for you to start, um, you know, that production company? Do you need to buy a camera? Do you need to buy equipment? Do you need to hire somebody? Um, and just start it, just start shooting stuff. I learned that when I, when I first started doing the videos, um, the, 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 the easiest way, the quickest way to get, for me to get good at shooting video was to actually shoot video. I mean, I can go to school and take a video production classes and, and, and buy all these books, but once you get out there and just start doing it, that's, you're going to get good at it that way. Um, so yeah. And then another, another, um, and in closing for me, and I'm also taking questions as well, if you have any questions, but in closing for me, I, I, I like to. I like to think of the one degree effect. So if a plane takes off from San Francisco and they're aiming for New York, right? If they're one degree north of New York when they take off from San Francisco, where do they end up? They end up in Maine. So, so think of it this way. So your life today, right? It's, 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 uh, it's February 20, 2016. Just think every day if you did something that, that got you closer to your goal. Every day. Like if, if you know, one, I, uh, before... When I, when I finished college and wanted to keep working out, I just knew every, every before I took a shower, I wanted to get down and do 50 push-ups. So before every shower, I got down and did 50 push-ups. Just, just cranked them out and got it done. And that, that, that kept my body in shape because I was doing it every day. If you want to be a singer songwriter, you know, write a bar or write a, a, a verse or a hook for a song every day. Just every day, even if it's bad, just do it every day because you're getting yourself in the mode of getting good at something. I mean, if, if you want to get good at basketball, just get out there and shoot the ball every day. Just shoot every day. Do something every day that's going to get you closer to your goal, even if it's not directly related. I mean, I, I'm in a habit of reading at least 10 pages a day. I mean, so my days are crazy. I mean, sometimes I'm up at 6, sometimes I'm up at 5, sometimes I don't go, go to sleep till 2. But somewhere in that day, I'm going to get in 10 pages the, to where I can take something in and go to sleep smarter than I woke up, go to sleep better than I woke up. So just get in the get in the habit of doing something every day. If if you want to get better at prayer, I mean, I, that's that's what I had to do. Is I you know pray for two minutes a day. Sometimes it's not it's not easy for us to pray for 40, 50 an hour uh, every day. But if you can do it for a couple minutes, you'll get better at it over time and over time. So 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 shift your today. I mean today could be your starting point. Just just decide to shift that one degree every day. And. Uh, Thanks for listening, and uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to take them from you. Okay. All right, cool. Everybody's good? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Question here? Where are you at? Where's your business? On Tree Boulevard in Concord. So we're Tree and Clayton kind of interact that. Uh, Alright, alright. I got a question. Uh huh. Uh, 
what's like the story of your business? Like when you started and okay. how long you've been going? Okay, so so my business I'm gonna turn this off. I um I bought it from a pre-existing owner. Um and okay, so I'll I'll even get into the numbers behind it. So the business costs a quarter million dollars, right? Do I have a quarter million dollars? No, it's, I, I don't have that much money. But when you're, it's called, it's called seller financing. Say if, if you wanted to buy a big ticket item from somebody, right? And they trust you, they believe you, they, they know you're not gonna scam them or, or scumball them. They'll, they'll give you the product and they'll say, pay me X amount of dollars over a certain amount of time, right? It's like a house. Like you only put five, 10, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars down, and they give you a 300 thousand dollar house. The, the bank does, they give you the loan for it. So that's using their leverage to, to purchase their product. Um, so the business costs a lot of money, I didn't have it, but I'm paying them off over time. And then it allows me to keep my cash. Like the cash that I did have, I mean, it's, I didn't have to put it in the business. I can, I can use it for marketing, I use it for promotions. Um, so it's it, the business was there for six years. I've been in it for just over two years, um, and then they say they say that the business has failed within their first two years. I mean, eighty percent of business, and I, I can't stand those statistics because a lot of them are skewed. I mean, you'd be surprised. There's the, the reason why so many businesses fail in the first couple of years is because so many people go out and get business licenses and don't renew, meaning that they they sign up for MLM. They sign up for some type of other business or they want to, oh, I'm going to be an athletic coach or athletic trainer. They go and get the license and then the year after that they don't renew. That's where the numbers are coming from. But, uh, uh, so so uh, instead, of, instead, of, um, instead of starting a business, which is really, 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 really hard from the ground up, buy a business that's some, it's already rolling. You know, it, it was already, it already had a book of business. Day one, I was making money. You know, so it's, 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 and, and you'd be surprised, a lot of people are trying to get out of their businesses. A lot of people 40, 50 years old are saying like, man, I've been doing this for so long. You know, I'm really, I'm really, I mean, the people who are sole proprietors, the guy in his bread bakery, the guy who's, um, you know, he has a, a couple plumbing trucks. You know, he might be willing to sell you his business if you can show him that you'll pay him off over time and he doesn't have to do the work for it. You know, he can, he'll take 75%, 75% of the money he's making now from you, and then you can do the rest with whatever you know profit you create in that business. So don't be afraid of going into a business on the guy who owns a donut shop, the, the person who owns a, you know, a limousine company, or you might know friends or family that might be in business and say, you know, what would it do? You know, what, what if you wanted to get out of it? And a lot of people will say like, hey, I really am trying to get out of it. And then if they get a sweet enough deal, they'll, <laughs> you could buy it off of them. I mean, I feel like instead of instead of starting a business from the ground up, I would be if, if I had to do it again, I would still buy a business because is, there's no day one, you know, run into this wall, run into that wall. It's already set in motion. It's already a, a will that's kicking out cash. It has a book of business. It has a system in place. It's going to cost you more, but just just think how much it's going to cost you for you to learn what vendor to use, for you to learn how to market and uh, promote your product, for you to learn how to hire employees for certain positions, how to, how to learn the, the actual machine and equipment. So don't don't be afraid to buy a business. But that, that's how I got into it. Yeah. Uh, um, what do you think of franchises? I, I'm, I'm in a franchise. Yeah, oh. yeah. And, okay, so I never knew how to run a business, you know? So I, I shot videos, I went to college, I took the entrepreneurship in, uh, in college, um, and that didn't teach me anything. <laughs> the, I, you know, you pay X amount of dollars for an entrepreneurship class, and it doesn't really teach you anything. I mean, they don't teach you how to balance books, they don't teach you how to hire, they don't teach you how to fire, <laughs> they don't teach you how. <laughs> I mean, so I learned more in the first month and a half of business than I did in a whole semester of a college credit course. Um, and, 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 and the reason being is it's, it's a franchise. It's, it's, it's a product of saying that, okay, we've got this business model. All you have to do is get in and do, and, and do what, what it says to do. And then add a little Joseph in it, right? Because you're going to add your own personality into it. But they already have a cookie cutter model for you to just just take and say, okay, well I'm gonna do this and that, this and that. It already has directions. You just gotta do the directions and do the work. Um, so franchises are great. I mean, there, there's there's pluses and minuses and everything. Um, but man, 
I, I didn't really know how to run a business, so I knew that with the, I can call corporate and say, hey, you know, my machine's tripping. I need a, a tech to get out here and fix it. Who can I call in the Bay Area? And they go, all right, call this guy. I mean, just think how long it took me to figure that out. How much money I would have wasted on bad technicians to fix my machine in time versus just, you know, paying the franchise a, a royalty and then, and then getting it the right way quick. But uh, franchises are good. I mean, they'll cost you a little bit more, but it's because it's already set. It's already in motion. It's 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 right under sixty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I mean, yeah, they I have the award ceremony and all that stuff. They <laughs> they like what I was doing out there. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody knows McDonald's. That's a franchise. It costs you a million to get in, but just look how much money you're gonna make. You know, you turn on those golden arches, <laughs> right? That's all you gotta do. <laughs> and then, I mean, yeah, that's it. Just turn the lights on. I mean, they try to get that. They try to make twelve dollars an hour there. I don't. I mean, that's a whole other subject. But <laughs> yeah, um, you know, Burger King. Some of those are franchises. Uh, Roto Rooter. Uh, no, that's not a press. Um, yeah, rescue. That's that's a franchise. Uh, a lot of these businesses you see around are franchises. I mean, and then get into the get into the mindset of you creating a franchise. You know, if you if you can get your business to a certain system, you can franchise it out to other people. You know, if you can start, um, I guess, uh, a, a dance studio, right? Let's say you start a dance studio. Um, and you you have the systems in place and the marketing in place to where every person you give this this model to is making money and they cookie cutter it all around America and you collect royalties on that. I mean, <laughs> you don't even have to work anymore. You don't have to dance. You know, they're all dancing and sweating for you and then you're collecting a royalty off of it. So get into that mindset. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, um, I call it the corridor principle. So the corridor meaning that you get into something, you start something, and then you're gonna figure out what your actual lane is. You know, you actually you pick up the basketball, and then you figure out if you're a post player, or if you're like a swing man, or if you're like a point guard. You figure that out over time, but you gotta pick up the basketball first. Um, so I got into the videography business, started shooting videos, and I said, oh, you know, I really need to work for myself because this is cool. I'm creating for myself, and I'm learning how. Okay, so it costs me X amount of money to do this, and then I make X amount of money. My profits lie here. Like that, I, the whole business owner aspect, it just it, 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 it got me going. And then the the print business, that was just being an opportunist. Um, I mean, I was on a random uh, AT and T call. I met up with this guy in Danville. Uh, I, I did did the work order for him. Uh, we kind of we kind of started talking, hit it off, and then you know, over time, over time, over time, we went out to a couple lunches. I took him out to a couple lunches, um, and then we kind of hit it off. And then he knew somebody trying to sell the business, and I said, "Hey, I'm your guy." Okay, because I was trying to connect. Have a passion for the No, 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 no. Okay, so. Yeah, and, and you probably heard this. Everybody says, follow your passion, follow your passion. I'm a firm believer that you follow the money, but bring your passion. <laughs> no, no, okay, no, no, think about it. Okay, so say the, the person on American Idol, they're passionate about singing, right? But they're terrible at singing, right? But they're passionate about it. So they go out and try a singing business, they're gonna be broke, right? <laughs> I mean, don't, don't let people fool you. They're gonna say, oh, follow your passion. If you wanna be a writer, write. If you're terrible at writing, do something that makes money for you, work on writing on the side, and then get good at it. I mean, they don't all these phrases and buzzwords and quotes and stuff, don't just buy into everything. I mean, if I want to follow my passion, I mean, what am I passionate about? I don't even know what I'm passionate about, right? <laughs> I'm still 10 years old. I don't know what I want to do in this world. But I know that I can make money off of selling t shirt at buying a certain uh, price and selling it for more. If, if I was selling tablecloths, I could be good at that. If I was selling uh, silverware, you know, it, it's, it doesn't really matter what you're getting into, as long as your why is, is, is you know, your end game. I, I'm more of a fan of being a business owner than being a, a t-shirt printer, you know, the t-shirt guy. Like, who likes the t-shirt guy, right? 
I don't even, like, I don't even see myself as a t-shirt. I see myself as a business owner, you know, as a, as a guy trying to grow a corporation up. It, will I be doing t-shirts next, like five years from now? Probably not, who knows? I, I mean, if I do, that was cool, but if not, who cares, right? I'll probably be doing something different. I'll, I'll, I'll doing something that you know is viable, that's gonna make some money. But I'm still passionate about being a business owner, passionate about employing people. So I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, th this world is this world is not it's not fit for. I mean, sheep. You know, I mean, there's so many sheep out there. We kind of have to be a shark. I mean, so many people just, you know, getting in the car, driving an hour and a half to work, you know, coming home, watching TV. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, you had to have your business license before you bought the business? Yeah. Well, no, I didn't. Um, you should. I bought it like three months into it. I mean, nobody came and knocked on the door and checked. I mean, Where that's... you buy it at? Uh, how do you get it? Okay, you and, and he'll, he'll, he'll go on to buy the business oh, license. Okay. But uh, yeah, don't let all that red tape stop you. Get into something, start it. I mean, this is me being me. Like, start something and then get it right. But if you wait forever for the right moment to get into it, you'll you never get into it. it. Yeah, yeah, you'll never do it. We good? Any more questions? All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right.